trying to be kind of playful, like, okay, check, check the blood, check the, you know, the EKGs and everything and trying to keep a positive spirit, kind of like my, my mask, you know, there it is again, the, the positive stuff. Yeah. And then this woman doctor, uh, and probably be, maybe because she was a woman doctor, I felt this sort of like, mater- like that maternal care or that, that uh, the feminine power of compassion. She put her hand on my, my lower leg and said, I, you did have a mild heart attack and I'm sure this is hard for you. And I just like, and that tough guy veneer just like melted away and I started crying. I'm like, I barely got out the words. Thank you. Like I just felt afraid of dying. I felt afraid of my family, for my friends. And, um, but then you know, once I got over that masculine mask stuff, I was like, okay, I'll take the help. And, and, and it loved me to heal like crazy. You know, I, it's not been perfect, but I have had so much uh, rich support and, and it, and uh, it's not like a slippery slope. You know, this is a message that we maybe I would want to share. And, and maybe you, I'm curious if you have this experience also, Shani. Like, I'm not like bugging my friends all the time to go get me groceries, you know, or feed me bonbons. Like, you know, I needed to rest and get help, but that's not, I didn't become like a ward of the state, you know, or like a, relying on people all the time. And I think people, we have this binary thought, like if you need help, that means you're only going to need help, you know? Welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast. My name is Ashanti Branch, and I'm really glad you've joined us. Our guest today is Ed Fraunheim. Ed is an author, a father. Uh, he's the author of the book, Reinventing Masculinity. You know, when Ed and I had this conversation, um, he reflected on the fact that six months ago, um, he had a heart attack. You know, imagine your health in this time of a pandemic and other health things maybe show up that you least expect. And one of the things that we talked about in this conversation was how sometimes it may be hard for men to ask for help. How our health is how we're able to provide and to be who we feel we're told we have to be. But what happens when we get sick? Maybe you've heard many stories of people who have, uh, at some point in their career, finally go off and retire. And then they're like, they don't know what to do because their identity was wrapped into this thing that they now can't do anymore. They're not doing anymore. In this conversation with Ed, he reminded me of a young man who I know who recently found some lumps in his body. And me being a mentor, you know, I'm like, hey, you got to go get that checked out. You got to go to make an appointment and he was afraid he had read some things online that about what he thinks it is and he made up some stories about what the treatments are like and what the problem is and 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 now he's worked up and he's not going to get the help and i we worked on it for months and he finally said okay i'm gonna make an appointment all right fantastic i checked with them after the appointment was supposed to be no, I couldn't go, he said. And you know, I, Ed, when he talks about this idea of uh, about broken masculinity in his book, that sometimes, definitely for men who've had heart attacks, but men who've had health scares, sometimes causes us to feel like not fully complete. And it can actually create mental health issues that sometimes are not even addressed early enough. You know, one of the things that's really meaningful about these conversations with men from all over, from all walks of life, all backgrounds, is that we're all human. We all feel, we feel pain, we feel ailments, we feel illness, we feel worry, we feel stress. And sometimes, depending on how we were taught or how we believe we have to operate, we may not even get the help when we really need it. So today, if nothing else that you listen from this conversation is that if you notice that something is health-wise that you need some attention, please do something about it. You know, it survived this heart attack. There's so many people who don't. So many people who don't survive other health things that maybe if they had just listened to their body, 
they had checked in with their own wellness, they could have maybe gotten help earlier. I was just recently thinking that in my family, there are not too many old men. I mean, as I continue to see more grays in my beard and think about my age, you know, rising, I'm like, there's not a lot of old men in my family. The women live much longer than the men. And I've, I feel some worry sometimes about that. And I feel like I'm carrying around extra weight that I don't need to carry. I shouldn't be carrying. I'm carrying it. And I need to make the decision to have a healthier lifestyle in that way too. And so I'm hoping that in these conversations, you begin to just listen and maybe take an inventory of your own self about what you need, what supports you need. And I hope that as younger men begin to hear from older men to talk about how we really operate, that they will begin to ask for help earlier as well. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us. You know, uh, if, if you have never made a mask, I want you just to know how it works. The, the mask is three steps. It's a picture. And then it's six words, three words on the front, which are things that we gladly let the world see. And then there's three things on the back or the things that we normally don't talk about or don't let people see. And thousands of people around the world have made masks. And so we invite you to also go make your mask. You can do that at 100kmasks.com. That's 100, number 100, kmasks.com. And you can also see masks of people from around the world who have shared what's happening in the front of the mask and what's happening behind the mask. Thank you for listening to the episode. Please share and like with anyone you feel can learn from this conversation. Anyone in your life who you know maybe needs to take some health precautions and who may not, maybe this conversation will inspire them to go and do something about it. Thank you for being a part of the journey with us. Enjoy today's episode. I am excited for you to be in this conversation. Um, it's gonna like Ed, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thanks, Sashani. Super glad to be here. I, I'm glad you're here with us, and I'm. I would like you to just tell folks about you. Like you know, I want you to tell them about yourself, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in because I'm, I'm really excited to be in this conversation with you. Sure. I'm a writer primarily, Ashanti, in, in, in community. Uh, I've uh, co-written four books, um, and I have moved from covering work and culture issues to also covering masculinity uh, matters. And the last book I, I co-wrote was called Reinventing Masculinity, uh, The Liberating Power of Compassion and Connection, written, co-written with Ed Adams. That came out last year. Um, and I'm really interested in this question of how do we show up as men these days at work, especially. Uh, and how do we uh, really meet the times and the moment and what's called for at work as well as society and for our own health, uh, moving from a, what we call a confined masculinity to a, a liberating one that frees us and everyone in, around us. So uh, I've also got two kids and a wife. I live in San Francisco. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm eager to be you know talking to folks like you and learn more about this community and how we can all advance, you know, how we can take our masks off and, and be more authentic, healthy men. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for, and I know when you and I first connected by email, uh, there was an email, I think the email was like from Ed and Ed. And I was like, what, what is happening here? What, 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 <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was some, I thought it was some, I thought it was some spam. And, and then I read the title. I was like, this is like a real topic. And then uh, I was like, oh, there's two different Eds. I was like, what is Ed yes. and Ed? Like, I thought it was, so I, I we, we appreciated like the fact that, two, that you and your. We like to say that uh, two Eds are better than one, Ashanti, you know. <laughs> nice. Uh, there we go. There we go. It's starting or, or off. The two headed monster. Already. It's <laughs> either that or yeah, two headed monster or the two heads are better than one. You, you'll, you'll have to judge for yourself. Oh, man. Well, imagine I'll, I'll know one by the end of this time. I'll know one really well at the end of this time together. Well, you know, one of the things that's really powerful, I think, about these conversations we've been having with men and young men of all ages, I think our youngest uh, participant has been 13 years old. Wow. And uh, I think our oldest is probably so far in the 60s, right? And so we are we we have a really intentional uh, attention in our team of recruiting and talking to men from all backgrounds. And we have some countries we're looking for people from certain countries that we're trying to meet. And I think one of the things I'm really excited about in, in, with you as an author 
who is like researching and looking into these topics is we get a chance to go deeper and we get a chance to like really recognize that there's so much more going on with us than people can see by looking at us. Mm. We often get stuck in what we see, right? Mm -hmm. What we, what we, what we see in others and maybe what we think people see in us, right? Mm. Which is oftentimes mm -hmm. this mask. And so, uh, for as a guest, I would like you to be able to decide who goes first. So either you go first or I get to go first, um, um, sharing the mask and we'll do, um, front, front, and then back, back, or whatever, whatever the guest kind of decides, however we roll it. Well, I've been inspired to do more listening than talking lately. And so I'm going to invite you to go first uh, with the front of your mask, Shanti. Okay. All right. Well, today's mask is inspired by, um, by a palm tree. Uh, wow. That's Love the that. mask. And um, I wrote serious creative and funny um as the front and i think that as i as i thought about this one uh, i found this um piece of a palm tree the other day and uh, when i saw, found it it looked like there were like eyes on it and i was like mm -hmm. this could be an amazing mask and i've been telling myself to i want to paint it and i'm like what are you doing painting you got time to be painting you you got an <laughs> organization to run you got stuff to do and uh, something about when I started drawing this today, I really just took some time to kind of like, sometimes I'm, you know, I keep it simple, but today I felt like I felt in this creative mode. I think for a long time, I didn't think I was creative. I didn't mm. think, um, I think early memories of elementary school, like being chastised by an art teacher, like you're, you're, you don't stay in the lines, your, your painting is horrible, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just began to think that creativity was the fact that I couldn't draw or, I couldn't mm -hmm. paint or that I didn't stay in the lines. And I think I've since learned more about that. And I, and I wrote, I mean, I put creative on here cause I'm really today. Um, I was preparing for a workshop that's coming up next week and um, working with a team member on that. And like, I just felt like when I, when I watched my mind go into like thought mode about how to facilitate a space for people. Yeah. That's when I feel like I'm at my best mm -hmm. when I, when I can like take content knowledge of what I've done before, and what works doesn't work, what needs to be adjusted, what needs to be pulled back, what needs to be put forward, yeah. timings, you know, activities. Because I really want people to leave our activity with not like that was just a, a waste of time, but I want them to leave like I got something, you know? And so uh, I think I never thought that being a facilitator or creating ex experiences was like a creative thing until mm -hmm. recently. And I think... Um, my serious side usually steps out first. That's why I'm not, I'm definitely not, I didn't, I didn't even put a necessarily a smile, even though I think I'm, I smile more than I don't. Um, I think I'm really serious. And sometimes my seriousness of getting stuff done kind of gets in, it sometimes gets in the way of the funny part, right? Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to be telling some jokes, but I'm like, we got stuff to do. We ain't got time to be telling jokes. We got work to do. We got projects to finish. And, um, and this is what stood out to me as the front today. And I think um, I, I think one of the words that I didn't write on here that I uh, sometimes have been writing recently is about being caring. And I think I try and be really caring, um, even though sometimes um, it can get confused with my serious side because I'm really caring and I want I care about not only people, but I care about this organization. And I think I'm, I try and have a balance between like how intense and serious I am but also how much I want people to feel to not only seen, heard, and feel a part of what we're creating. So that's the front of my mask today. I, can you show it again? I'm, yeah. I'm, that's it was the... very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think you captured uh, – it is serious, um, creative, and funny at the same time. All those things kind of work there for me. Uh, and I uh, appreciate everything you're saying there. Um, and I love what you're Thank saying you. about how so many of us, I think guys, maybe especially, but maybe all, you know, every woman and men, non-binary binary folks can get told they're not creative when it's just a human quality, you know, like, and this half the time going outside the lines is actually, you know, that's part of what's creativity is doing something new and different. You know, I think that, that, there is benefit of learning certain, uh, you know, uh, trades or crafts around art and, and, and mastery of some techniques, but 
man, uh, the, the number of adults who won't even draw anything because they're, they are paranoid that they're bad artists. It's just, it's just sad. Right. So I think recognizing that we have that divine creativity, that spark uh, is powerful. So I'm glad you, you used that term. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now you can go first. You go front. All right. All right. Um, here is my front of my mask. I'm going to put it right in front of my face. Okay. Um, so I put down here positive, smart, and caring. Use that term uh, you, you talked about. And um, it has me, you know, with glasses and a smile, my, not that much hair. Um, and um, I try to keep that upbeat energy going. You know, and I, I, that's, I often feel like that's, I'm at my best. I'm <clears throat> enthusiastic and uh, bringing energy and, and, a, and a positive outlook. Um, I, I think the smartness thing is a part of my ego. I've been gone to like good schools and, and being a writer. And uh, there's some part of me that likes being considered to be smart with words or, or uh, you know, know, knowledgeable about workplace culture. So, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely, I, I guess with your activity, it's like show what you're, you're comfortable sharing. Um, and I'm not totally proud of this, but I think I do share, show up that way, or I, I'm try to be smart, you know, if you will. Um, and then the caring part is, you know, not unlike what you said, like I, I care a lot about this movement toward a uh, healthier masculinity, toward people being authentic, being able to, to be their real selves toward uh, workplaces where people can thrive and, and, and not feel beaten down. Um, so those are the, those are the terms that came to me. I, and I did your activity once other, t one other time. Um, so my mask is in your database from a couple years ago when you <laughs> did something at a, the better man conference. Uh, so I, I couldn't remember exactly what I did, but it was probably somewhat similar to this mask. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm glad you were at that conference and we, and what's really beautiful is that, um, whatever it was then is exactly what it was then, but today may be different. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've made hundreds of masks, right? Personally, and I think that that's a moment of like, um, there was a show I was on with a man, uh, Dan Doty, and he wrote "caring" on the front, and I was like, I like that word, and I realized I don't usually write "caring" on the front. I'm like, why don't I write "caring"? And I realized sometimes I get into a a rhythm, right? Because I've been doing so many masks that that oh, maybe I, I need to begin being more thoughtful. So I remember at one of the episodes. Uh, my uh, uh the 50th the, the one year anniversary episode the, the 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 guest was like how about you just uh come up with some brand new words he's a, he's the editor of our podcast um Ryan mm -hmm. he's like how about you come up with some brand new words you haven't used this whole year and i'm like what mm -hmm. what is wrong with you what do you mean yeah. asking me to go deep <laughs> you know like and i realized oh wow like i i've become, i've gotten into a habit of certain series of words and so i'm like Hmm. And it was really beautiful because I found myself in that beautiful struggle of like, okay, what are the other things that I don't, that I show and don't show? So thank you for that. And I'm, and I'm excited to, to be in this, um, in, in, in this space with you. So yeah, me too. Well, let's take a breath. Maybe let's take a breath. Cause we're going to move to the back, you know, that's the scary part. Ashanti, come on. Do we really have oh, to go there? Man, man. <laughs> oh man. And, and, I, and I'm, and, I, and I'm writing actually the last one right now, just to be really transparent. I I've been holding back with like what I was gonna write about, and um, and and I, and I think I just finally got it because I was thinking, okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go. So okay. this is what I wrote. I wrote fear. I wrote confined. Um, I was listening to your audio book today, mm -hmm. and uh, anger. And I wrote anger up a brother there, and and not really anger at my brother. I think two things of anger come up and I think I want to speak more probably to the anger, but the reason I wrote confined is, you know, as I've been creating more content and creating more like material, I found that most of the things that hold me back from sharing material out in the world is fear hmm. it is fear of failure, fear of looking bad, fear of making a mistake, fear of being judged, fear of all these different fears. And when I think about confined, it's sometimes like, who who am I to come in on this on this topic? You know, who am I to? I don't want nobody 
you're making a judgment about me. And I think I saw, um, you know, recently a, a football player who just brutally attacked his girlfriend. And I literally got sick in my stomach and I got angry and I got like, and I was like, I was about to, you know, repost it. And then I'm, I'm like, I found myself like hesitating to say really harsh words. I was like, well, I don't know the whole story, but this is not acceptable is what I wrote. Because I, I don't know the whole story, but I also know that what he did was mm-hmm. without a doubt unacceptable. And I felt confined to like really speak the anger that I feel inside, knowing that I've done some stupid, inappropriate stuff before that I feel sometimes embarrassed about. And, but it's not who I am today. It's who I was when I was younger, more less immature or, or more reckless, more not mm-hmm. thinking before I act and just acting out of, you know, emotion and whatever. And so I feel like sometimes I'm confined and I feel held back by that. And um, the anger part I wrote, I wrote about today was about my brother and I have two brothers. Um, uh, this this one I'm going to talk about right now is my brother who um, uh, I have two brothers. I'm the oldest. And so my, my second, my first brother, um, he has a uh, paranoid schizophrenia. He has a uh, mental health um um, situation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't talk much about it. Uh, I speak about it here and there, but this um, yesterday he showed up at my house twice. First at six in the morning, saying he wanted some food. I'm like, dude, you have food at your house. Why are you? Why are you not at your house? Um, and he was saying some story about, oh, I have to go to the meeting, and he had no jacket on. It was cold out yesterday morning. I'm like, where's your jacket? And I, sometimes I can't tell like what part of him understands what he's doing and what part of him doesn't. And so mm-hmm. I was getting a little bit irritated and I was like, okay, and I'm trying to look for a jacket to give him because I'm not getting the jacket back. So whatever jacket I give him, mm-hmm. I just got to prepare that I'm giving it away, you know, forever. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, what jacket can I give him? I make him some breakfast. And then he's like, well, I'm going to go. And I'm like, well, hold on, let me try and find your jacket. And I'll go look for a jacket. And he walks away. And so I find him. I finally drive up to the street, find him, give him the jacket. He comes back at my house last night at like 11 p.m. He's intoxicated with some 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 substances, and he's like, "I just got, I need a place to sleep." I'm like, "Brother, you we we've already discussed this, you know." So I felt like like worried about him. Like he can't sleep on the street. I don't I don't feel comfortable. But also he can't sleep in my house because it's it's a dis, it's a discomforting situation and. Mm-hmm. And so we had to make a decision of like finding a place for him to go last night. But I was like, I felt angry that I was like, I was I was a little short tempered with him, you know. Like, I, I was very short tempered with him. I remember just at some point I yelled at him, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think those are the parts of myself that I don't talk much about. I mean, I, I love him. I mean, but I'm I'm also get very irritated by him. I get very charged and activated by him, and um, and I didn't like. Some some mm-hmm. of the ways I showed up last night with him, even though I, I can, <laughs> I, 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 one of our guests um, named Devin Gaster who talks about this idea of our hitman, right? He calls our our hitman about mm-hmm. like this who comes out and protects us, but also he comes out to like, and he's not he's not very kind, right? He's mm-hmm. he's sometimes out of control, and my hitman last night was like justified. It was. <laughs> He was ruthless and he was like, don't you dare cough in my car without covering your mouth. Like he was like a regulator, right? Mm -hmm. Now, not only are we in a pandemic and you're coughing in my car, like you're not covering your mouth. Like that's just disgusting, right? All the things I can make up stories about it, but the way I responded was Mm -hmm. not, not, was not healthy, Um, not healthy for my brother. It wasn't mm-hmm. healthy for me. So I don't know, that was a longer share than I usually do on the back, but that that's the back for today. So thank you. Wow. Uh, I really appreciate you, you know, revealing that, Ashanti. And uh, that's heavy stuff to have uh, the mental illness in your family and to wrestle with those family members that you love, but that drive you crazy and, and um, with really challenging situations. So I, I, I I have, you know, I, I can go there with you with some of my family members too. And, and uh, I hope you can give yourself a break because uh, it, it sounds like you overall, you're, you're still taking care of them. Uh, and, and being able to like name it right now is, is powerful in terms of being able to forgive yourself, forgive your brother, 
try to be better the next time, you know, a little, get, get more of that patience, more of that, uh, um, you know, this, the caring thing that you talked about and the, that you didn't put on your thing, but clearly you have a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. Um, so yeah, and I, I appreciate you using the word confined, by the way, because which is uh, part of how we talked about masculinity being really a limiting one it, it, for much of our, our yeah. history up, you know, from like the last five or 10,000 years, uh, not feeling like we could do a lot of different things in the world, like that would be too womanly or, or homo, you know, be like what homosexuals do if we're going to be affectionate or, or kind to each other and show emotion uh, and that that would be yeah. somehow awful. Right, like the, the homophobia and the sexism that we've carried that limit us, and um, uh, you know, I we use confine in terms of like the roles you can play and the ways you can relate to others, and and yeah. but you're you're showing a new way to me, like which is to say, like you know, biting your tongue, you know, or or sort of like limiting what you mm. can your your ability to speak up in the world, which is um, I think that's a really powerful truth, also that men often don't feel like we can uh, stand up for what we believe uh, for whatever reason. You know, maybe we're, we don't feel like we're the experts, like you said, or feel if, like related to what you said about the fear of failure or, or not yeah. um, have any authority uh, to, to, to yeah. weigh in on a topic. So I, I, I really appreciate what you shared, all, all those three th- qualities. Thank you. Thank you very much. But where was the image? I was, I wasn't, I was ready for your, like, uh, the map. Oh, Is there the back an of- image? Is there no? No. no ma- normally, there was some. Some people will. Some people will draw one on the back. We don't ask for one because I think okay. that requires a lot of. That requires a lot of like meta thought. Like, what does the back of that thing? <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get the words out of people. So if you got a back, yeah. that's so great. Well, All right, <laughs> I got a back. I have a back. I mean, well, because you, right. you have the two different uh, sides here. So I, should I show mine now? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Okay, here is here is mine. Oh, Roughly the nice. same shape, but more like the skull shape. But uh, so I put in here pessimistic, unsure, and and self absorbed. Um, oh, and that to me, they're kind of like parallels to the positive, smart, caring thing. You know, the, if I looked at the whole thing. Um, yeah. And yeah. You know, so in some ways the. The unsure thing is related to like fear, anxiety. So that's just something I've wrestled with, you know, in my life, especially over the past six months. So I had a, a heart attack and an anxiety attack that we talked about. Um, but the pessimistic thing is 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 like the flip side of the positive. I can get really down on how we're doing as a society, you know, uh, whether my own kids are going to, you know, turn up, turn out right, you know, whether I'm a, a good father, you know. So it's personally, I can look at it inside internally and be pessimistic about myself, but also in my view of how, how things are unfolding beyond me. And then the, the self-absorbed thing is like feeling really like selfish, you know, like I'm, I'm, I am caring, but I'm also like, how's this going to get me anywhere? You know, how's this going to advance my mm-hmm. ability to make money or be famous? You know, some of these things that I theoretically and intellectually, I don't care about, like, like, like I did when I was younger, I like to think I've matured and gotten more enlightened, if you will. But I I still, you know, have these pangs of, you know, just being about me, you know, and I, and I'm not, Mm. I'm not, I don't like to share that, you know, I don't like like people to, I don't want people to see that, but it is, it's in that backside of the, uh, the mask. Oh man, you that that one that one connected. That was a left right jab right there. I, I, <laughs> this, that that one is one that I <laughs> that I am like, and and, and and because I run a nonprofit, I sometimes I, I go to the extreme around that one. Around mm-hmm. like like you know when we started the Million Mask Movement, I was talking to my mentor about like oh I came up with this idea. For these cards that we were going to have people make these cards. We originally were doing it on pieces of paper, just balling them up. And there was no structure. It was just I was going to these workshops and I was like, what if we get people to do this activity and we invite people from all over to do this activity? And I was, he was like, well, yeah, well, you know, you just give it away. And I'm like, huh? Give it away. What do you mean? What do you mean? Give it away. Like, 
we're a small nonprofit here in Oakland. Like this is our only thing we got. Like this is our this is our best creation ever. Like mm-hmm. you want me to give it away? Like w- why would I do that? And he yeah. was like, "Well, I mean, do you want to you know want to make a bunch of money or you want to make impact?" I'm like, "Well, how about both?" You know? <laughs> He's like, "Well, true, but in this moment, yeah. there's this thing you're just creating." Like <laughs> he said, "How about do you want to make money or you make impact?" And I'm like. Yeah, I mean, I want to I want to have an impact in this work, right? And he's like, you may need to just give it away. And I really mm. was like that moment when you say like what is it what's in it for me? Like if this is the only thing I ever created, well, like I mean, yeah, so let's say let's say, let's say that. It was the only thing I'd ever created. It was our best best bet at growing this nonprofit. And now I'm going to give it away. I was like I felt really in the moment, I felt really like disappointed in just even the thought of it knowing that deep down is what it needed to happen like in order to mm-hmm. cut down the friction on on schools integrated in with their classes it couldn't be a, a cost barrier and i knew that most schools wouldn't don't have they don't even make money for professional development so let's know make money for some cards that are going to come in the mail you know mm-hmm. and i realized that when i first made that first car is to give it away i, I asked those questions i was like Am I being, I, I felt, I was wondering, I was, I was feeling that in myself, you know, like, mm-hmm. why, why would I do that? What's, what's, what's going, to, what's going to be in it for us? And I think that, you know, along this journey, I've felt that so many times. So thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure. I, I, that's such a great story. And, and I suspect by giving it, I'm curious, Ashanti, like by giving it away and like having, you know, a lot of people do this. How many, how many people have done it on your website by now at this point? Isn't it like hundreds of thousands or did you hit a million? No, no, we're, we're so far from there. We, we, we definitely have close, we have close to, we have, I mean, the last count is over 60,000, Over 60, um, okay. but we just use 50,000 as a, yeah, over 60,000 people have made. Now we've, we've basically supported, we, we've given out materials over 180,000 um, resources out to teachers around the country, okay. around the world, but though all those masks haven't come back to us, okay, right? They had, they, so we, we we put them out there in the world. Teachers are doing them, but we hadn't gotten all those teachers to give them back yet. Got it. Um, and and I think that that began to make me feel even more like protective, right? Mm. And I think that's but, the danger, right? Yeah, yeah. But it, well, it has has there been a a way in which you have found that you're invited to speak or give workshops because you gave it away. Is that true? I, I would say that it all has played a part, you know? Okay. I, I would say that I, I think I'm more clear now. Like, I think, imagine if, if, if like, if it was up to me, we would have had a million in the first month, right? Like imagine my, my hyper active desire and goal oriented mm-hmm. self, right? Like yeah. there would have been by now we'd be at over a billion, right? Like, like that's me in my, and I think mm-hmm. I haven't, maybe I wasn't ready. Mm. I think as everything I'm learning today that I'm getting, that I'm getting smarter about today and, or as an organization, I, I've, it's been a journey of learning mm. and I think mm-hmm. I've gotten smarter and I've gotten a little bit more wise that maybe the learning that I had to happen for me had to happen over time that if I had achieved, if it had, you know, gone viral and got achieved all of them, all of them at once, I probably would have missed a lot of the learning along the journey. Right. Nice. nice. Like this podcast wasn't a part of the original piece. This podcast came out of these conversations with more men that I met who were not having conversations like this, who weren't on a men's team, who hadn't read any books about Iron John and, you know, King Warrior, Lover, Magician, and hadn't done their own men's work mm-hmm. to decide, Oh, I'm, I'm actually more human than I'm, letting myself be seen as. And I think all these things that have happened along this journey, like are happening for a reason, right? I mean, I think I trust that. I believe that mm-hmm. part of the way it works, the universe works and uh, you know, whatever higher power people believe in is that it's, it's coming at the right time. Right. And I think that, mm-hmm. and I'm getting wiser because I'm still holding back on stuff that I want to say out in the world that I'm not saying because I'm uh, the fear. Right. So mm-hmm. how dare I achieve this big goal where I'm still afraid to like share what I'm learning from what I'm what I'm learning, you know? So I think it's mm-hmm. like, are you ready for it? Like, are you really ready to, to have this happen? And I think that 
it's a test, right? I think the for days of frustration mm-hmm. get are, are testing me or testing me to the resolve. How 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 bad do you want it, Ashanti? How bad do you want it? You know? And that's I think really that's part cool of the journey to too. It. That is a that's a very cool framing. And it resonates with me in terms of like um some of my my desire to kind of make a bigger difference in the world, especially helping men in, in organizations, Ashanti, and I've just been kind of um, kicking myself a little bit for not doing more to try to get my work out there and try to do workshops and so forth. And I, I, I tried one earlier in the year and it, it didn't sell a lot. And so not, then I was a little bit frozen out of that fear thing. Like, does that mean I, I can't ever do it again? You know, it, it was definitely that unsure piece. Um, but then, like you said, like it's, I've learned a lot this past year about how to, you know, be on my own. I left my job, a stable job in December in the middle of the pandemic and managed to earn a living for my, my family, mostly doing editorial type writing work, book coaching, book writing. And, um, and now I'm, I kind of feel like I'm more ready. You know, I've, I have learned a lot from people like you and the community of, of these, you know, pioneers thinking about a healthier maskless masculinity, you, you might say. So uh, I like the way you're framing that. Yeah, well, I mean, thank you. I mean, thank you for the work and thank you for the book. Dude. I, I, I think that's where my next piece and I maybe I, I need to learn from you, right? Because I've, I've been, you got four books. I'm trying to get the first one out and I feel like I'm like, what's wrong with me? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll sit down. I think I'm much better audibly than I am, you know, with typing mm-hmm. and the computer QWERTY, you know, I'm, I get, yeah. I'm more audible than I can QWERTY, you know, I yeah, think yeah. QWERTY, QWERTY, QWERTY slows me down quite a bit. Of course, for those who don't know, QWERTY is just the, the letters on the keyboard of the computer of, of, of a typewriter. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, all these apps exist right now that I can just talk it out. Why am I still holding back? Oh, cause it's not the QWERTY. It's something else. It's more, it's deeper and what, and trying to get to the roots of what's blocking me in this because you know yeah. I'm, it's not the qwerty it's the yeah, hurty yeah what what, what it's the it's like hurt. what is painful oh, right like it's not the qwerty it's the hurty oh <laughs> you didn't said it right there that is exactly i'm right. guessing i'm That's guessing me. you know knowing what we know about fear and the, the pain of, of, of coming across as not super smart or not not wise and oh. You know, not selling a ton. And if, if that's those are things that I'm I wrestle with all the time, anyways. I, I, is that is that kept getting something for you? Oh, that's that. <laughs> I I think I need to write that as a post. I need to write a post that says it's because because the people who I said this to a year ago, they're like, so how's the book coming? And I'm like, <laughs> don't ask, <laughs> don't ask me, don't ask me, right? Because it's, yeah. it's it's so. <laughs> and I and I think I've I think I've made progress in some ways, but in some ways I haven't. And I'm also like, oh, I'm. And and I say, well, you know, I'm not a good writer. It's excuses. Some of them, some of them are just excuses. And but I think it's the hurdy. I think it's because I'm writing about emotions and feelings and my feelings and emotions. I think if I was writing a story about students, it, it would come out a lot fat easier, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I could write about that kid. Oh man, that was amazing success story. I could write about that student. But when I start writing about myself, it it gets it's heavy, right? And I think that some of those pieces are. Uh, or things that I've been thinking about lately is like, okay, how do I make a mix of both, right? Of, mm-hmm. of the students, the young men in this work, and also how how that resonates with the journey that I've been on and, and, and seeing them make it through tough times and seeing them do amazing things in the world. I think that is, that stands out to me a lot. And I think that <laughs> it's not QWERTY. It, it is hurty. It, it is, um, that, that place of saying, okay, Ashanti, you're not alone. And your story, I think that if it was an idea that would just go away, I wouldn't worry about it. Cause like, mm-hmm. I would not be like, but, but I think about it almost, almost every day. Like mm. Ashanti, you're supposed to be writing this thing. You're supposed to be doing this thing. And I think it's the, my next, it's my next journey. So that it, I thank you yeah. for that because I'm going to, I think I'm, I'm slowly breaking past all the barriers that are holding me that are yeah. getting in the way and fear fear of is has been one of them so yeah right on Ashanti. thank you yeah. and thank I, you i think there's a cool thing happening uh, i think among like, this newer generation and i'll include us both in it like of uh, uh, people doing men's healing work where a lot of there's a lot of new books 
underway. And and I know three friends that are in the middle of writing books are just coming them out with them. I don't know if you know Christopher Veal, the whole man book. Are you connected with him by any chance? Do you know Christopher Veal? Christopher, the name sounds familiar. Christopher, Christopher Veal. Veal. He's he's got a podcast called the Vol- the Vulnerable Man, and his book is called uh, the Whole Man. Okay. Uh, and then uh, another friend of mine named Sean Harvey has got something that's about like uh, the wound. Uh, it's about the wounded warrior and, and the compassionate warrior, basically. And he's talking about men's healing mm. and how powerful that is to change organizations and systems. Uh, Brian Anderson of Fathering Together is working on a book. Jim Young. A uh, friend of mine in, um, is working on a book as well about burnout in men. So it's a time for you. You know, this is this is your moment, I think. Mm-hmm. And you you bring in a perspective of, of working with a lot of younger people and people yeah. of color and, and folks that are uh, that haven't been um, necessarily, you know, privileged in society. And it's my impression of a lot of your work with the kids you're doing and, and the neighborhoods. So get on yeah. it and, and don't don't beat yourself up either. You know, this is. Like you said, you know, you, it's, mm. this is the moment and whenever the moment is right, you can do it. And, and if you need some accountability or help, I'm happy to be a, a nagger for you, a benevolent nagger. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And I, and I think one part that I, that I want to say is, you know, normally if I heard somebody ask, offer that, I and mean, in the past that my, my old self would be like, oh, that's so nice of them. And I would never take them up on it because I would I would hear it and then I would be like, they're too busy to be worrying about my stuff. And so I want you to know that I I am going to take you up on it and I, I could definitely use it. And even just some strategy of writing, right? Like just taking time, mm-hmm. okay, carving out time. I think it's just like mm-hmm. making a discipline, right? Because it's not going to write itself, right? It has to be a, a discipline. Yeah. And so, yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sure. that. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm making a commitment to writing a post about. It's not qwerty. It's hurdy. I love that. Uh, right I'm, gonna, I'm, 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 I'm gonna. Write, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write a blog post today. I'm gonna write it today between tonight and tomorrow midnight. I'm gonna write a post. I'm look about for it. That. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll chime in on it. <laughs> and well, and I think you're right about the carve out piece. I mean, that that's something I just got inspired to do with my business coach, um, uh, a wonderful woman named Liz Solomon, and she's like. I had preserved Monday afternoons for my writing uh, and I thought I was going to start writing another book about my own masculine journey. And I'm realizing it's really not the right form for me right now, but I think writing about my lessons learned from this health scare of having a heart attack and an anxiety attack. And uh, that's feeling more appropriate and even trying to, you know, help people get inspired to buy the book that is out there that I wrote, um, which is, I think got a lot of good ideas in it. Um, But uh, to carve out time to spend yeah. on writing and you know, doing this work is vital. And now I've, I've now carved out two whole days a week to do that. Uh, so I'm not only focusing on nice. you know other kinds nice. of clients. And so, um, yeah, whether you take that whole bunch of time or, or uh, just one day or one afternoon to get started, I think it's a really smart idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's about to happen. It, it, I can feel it. I can, I can feel it. Uh, and I and I'm and I'm excited and I and I think you know one of the things I'm really thankful for you when you shared about your your health um, situation I saw that on, on on LinkedIn and you know I it inspired me because I know that when I'm feeling when I'm having some health issues I don't I, I I'm more like don't don't say anything right I'm more like mm-hmm. that and I remember uh, even last year 2020 when I when I had COVID you know like mm-hmm. um, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't wow. tell anybody. I was like, I, I was afraid. I was embarrassed. I was like, I, I, I always wear my mask. I'm always like washing the baskets when I go to the store. I was always like, thought I was being smart. Yeah. And I thought, <laughs> and not that I'm not judging smart compared to getting COVID, but I am saying mm-hmm. I told myself a message that you, I believe in this. I'm afraid of this. And I'm going to protect myself against this. And when it happened, I thought that I was not, so I, I made a judgment. I made a personal judgment about myself. And so mm. I didn't tell anybody, but I was struggling. I was like, how am I going to get groceries? How am I going to get food? Like, what the heck is going to happen? And I remember mm. a friend calling randomly. And one of those friends who, when they ask you how you're doing, they actually really mean it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, everything's good. And then they, he was like, are you sure? 
I'm like, mm-hmm. huh? What are, you, what are you talking <laughs> about? He's like, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just checking in on you. Haven't haven't seen you post in a while. I'm just seeing if you're all right. And I was like, and I was like, oh, can I tell him? Should I tell him? I don't want to tell him. Should I tell him? And I remember once I told him, like, I was like, he's like, what? Why haven't you mm-hmm. told me? And I was like, mm-hmm. he's like, can I go get you some food? I'm about to go to the grocery store. Can I get you something? Uh, I'm uh, like, ah, I don't want to bother you. He's like, dude, I, I can't believe you're even saying that right now, right? And I think because I'm not used to having people help me, I yeah. think for me, it, it's hard to accept help, even when that's I true. definitely need it, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So that's so that's a moment of like, so when you shared yours, I'm like, man, I felt, I felt encouraged and I felt appreciating you and I felt heartfelt like you know wishing you prayers and what best wishes of getting better and but I also was like man that's that's some courage I'm trying to yeah I'm trying to gain you know and so thank you thank Thank you you for that I'm glad you you did share that and that's kind of what I experienced too you know like uh like most guys we don't think we can rely on people right that's we're supposed to be the tough rugged individualists and when we need help uh, or, or people offer to help us, it's hard for us to let our guard down. But I, there was a moment when I had my heart and I was in the hospital and I'm trying to be kind of playful, like, okay, check, check the blood, check the, you know, the EKGs and everything and trying to keep a positive spirit, kind of like my, my mask, you know, there it is again, the, the positive stuff. And then this woman doctor uh, and probably be, maybe because she was a woman doctor, I felt this sort of like mater- like that maternal care or that that uh, the feminine power of compassion. She put her hand on my my lower leg and said, "I, you did have a mild heart attack, and I'm sure this is hard for you." And I just like, and mm. that tough guy veneer just like melted away, and I started crying. I'm like, mm. I barely got out the words, "Thank you." Like I just felt afraid of dying. I felt afraid of my family, for my friends. And, um, mm. but then you know, once I got over that masculine mask stuff, I was like, okay, I'll take the help. And, and, and it loved me to heal like crazy. You know, I, I've not been perfect, yeah. but I have had so much uh, rich support and, and it, and uh, it's not like a slippery slope. You know, this is a message that we, maybe I would want to share. And, and maybe you, I'm curious if you have this experience also, Shani, like, I'm not like bugging my friends all the time to go get me groceries, you know, or feed me bonbons. Like, you know, I needed to breast and get help, but that's not, I didn't become like a ward of the state, you know, or like a, relying on people yeah. all the time. And I think people, we have this binary thought, like if you need help, that means you're only going to need help. You know, yeah. was that true for you at all? You probably got back on your feet pretty soon. Yeah. Right? Oh man. Oh man. You said it. I mean, I think that's, I did. I only asked one maybe person for help, and I think it became like that wasn't as hard as I thought, right? It was like, I mean, I literally this this friend like went to the store, brought the stuff, put it on the porch, took a picture of my house with the food on the porch, and then he texts me after he was already back home. He's like, "Hey, here's a here the picture of food at your house." I'm like, "Where are you?" He's like, "I'm already home." <laughs> I'm like, "Why did you're not you? gonna give me COVID?" He's like, "Cause he was like." <laughs> <laughs> it was two sides he was like i didn't want you trying to pay me and all this i know how you'd be trying to do he was like i uh-huh. just wanted to like get out of there so that you you just need to eat and rest and i was like mm-hmm. man people who know you well are helping you not like i think that's just so beautiful right and i think that mm-hmm. and, and i haven't always trusted men in my life that in that way so having that man really come and just offer a gift of just goodwill was beautiful so and i so i just want to thank you for sharing your story too with other people who may be inspired by that as well so thank you ed you're so welcome ashanti i'm glad so happy you're sharing yours too maybe we'll make a little difference here our our vulnerable men stories taking the mask off stories right (laughs) That, that's how we do it. One one mask at a time. How about mm-hmm. this? How about you tell folks now not only the name of your book again, but how they can find it, and then how they can get in touch with you 
And what I would love to do is we'll put that all in the show notes. But if you can just tell folks how they can okay. find you and where the best places you want them to, if they want to learn more about what you're working on. Sure. Thank you. It's uh, the book is reinventing masculinity, the liberating power of compassion and connection. Uh, and you can find me on LinkedIn also at my website, edfraunheim.com and uh, happy to connect with folks. Well, listen, I am, I'm, thank you for making time for this conversation. Uh, thank you uh, for just making time. And I really appreciate you. And I, and I hope that not only this continues our connection in a deeper way that, you know, that as we, you know, as a high rock and our work can support what you're doing and what we're learning from men and the work that you're learning and continue to learn from men. And as you share more of your own personal journey, I, I appreciate you for that. And uh, thank you again. Thanks so much, Ashanti. It's such an honor to be on your show with you and uh, keep up all your great work. I'm glad to get, get a deeper connection with you over time. Thank you. So folks out there, thank you for being a part of today's show. Uh, thank you for being a part of the Taking Out the Mask podcast. If you haven't made your mask, you can do that at 100kmasks.com. That's 100kmasks.com. And we look forward to you being a part of this million mask movement, getting us one mask closer to a million masks. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. Taking Off the Mask podcast is produced by Ryan Louie. Editing videography is also by Ryan Louie. Graphics by Kelly Wong. And a special thanks to the team at Ever Forward, Vanessa Cortez and Kevin Romero. And I'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of the creation of this podcast. As we hit this one year anniversary, we hope that everyone who's been a part knows that they're a part of the Taking Off the Mask experience. And we look forward to you being a part of it as well. If you liked what you heard today, please like, subscribe and share. And we look forward to us continuing to offer conversations that matter. Take care. See you soon.